And to my knowledge, this is the first case where a live stream was used as an alibi in a murder case. case. Even though Twitch has protocols and many terms of service to prevent people- Oh, I already know the number one most deadly Twitch killer. Y'all already know. Remember Buffalo, bro? Remember Buffalo, bro, like a year or two ago, bro? The Buffalo shooting at the store. Jada was literally working too, just at a different store, but right next to there. I literally saw that, but that's bad. The one he went in and killed a bunch of black people. He's hunting down black people. People from doing unethical things on the platform, sometimes streams slip through. He the literally streamed it on Twitch, bro. Just killed every black person he saw, bro. He died, right? Stefan Balliot was a 27-year-old German man living in the municipality of Bendorf with his mother. He underwent military training during his six months service in the German armed forces as an 18-year-old, oh, where he learned no. to handle weapons like the HK G36 assault rifle and the HK P8 pistol. He later pursued studies in chemistry and molecular and structural product design at Halle University. By all accounts, he was a shut-in, spending most of his time online with very little real human interaction. It should go without saying that this had a negative effect on his mental state, sending him down a dark path that eventually led to a breaking point. At Why approximately like noon on October 9th, 2019, Bally had embarked on a mission to a synagogue in the city of Halle, a 45-minute drive from his home. This was also the second and final day of Yom Kippur, a prominent oh, no. Jewish holiday of solemn prayer and atonement of sins. But when Stefan arrived at the house of worship, he was not planning on joining the religious practitioners. Equipped with homemade firearms and a helmet-mounted camera, his intentions were much more sinister, and he wanted to show the world what he was about to do by streaming it on Twitch. While he initially tried to breach the synagogue's fortified doors, Balliot was thwarted by its security measures, preventing his entry. Frustrated by his failure, the crazed gunman decided to unleash his violent urges on anyone he could. He shot and killed Yana Lang, a 40-year-old woman who was simply walking past the nearby Jewish cemetery. With the House of Worship's recently updated security system, the congregation inside watched Bro. in horror as Balliot committed his crime. The killer then drove to a nearby Turkish kebab shop. There, he murdered Kevin Schwarz, a 20-year-old man, and injured another customer before fleeing the scene. In his escape, a Balliot would- Bro, these people, bro. Do you think these people are normal? They just decide to do it to do it? Because, like, in my head, I'm like, bro, I know how I feel. Like, no, no normal nit human is just- Yeah, I'm gonna just go kill everybody. There's something wrong, like, there's- There's something, bro, like- there's something that stops you from doing anything close to that. Just killing innocent lives, bro. Additionally injure a married couple. A Great observation, Joshy. Oh! <laughs> you know, I, that's, that's what happens when you study at Harvard for four years. 40-year-old woman and a 41-year-old man who ran a business in Landsberg. Throughout this rampage, the killer continued to livestream the entire ordeal, broadcasting his acts of violence and spewing anti-Semitic rhetoric for approximately 35 minutes. Despite the fact that his broadcast had just five live viewers, Twitch was quick to step in and shut it down as soon as they realized what was going on. Authorities were alerted and a manhunt quickly ensued. Balliot's attempt Yes, I know reports are a thing, but how does t there's millions of streamers with like low viewers just streaming? How does Twitch know with like only a, a, like five viewers? Let's say one person reported it, like the urgency, like like like. There's, re there's reports coming in, thousands of reports coming in by the seconds. I told them, AI, it's got to be like a bot, right? To escape in a rented vehicle led to an 80 kilometer chase from Halley. He was finally apprehended in Zietz, located 50. There is, but how 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 accurate could the bot be? Let's say we're playing a realistic ass because he has it in first person mode, like in a video game, gang. Helmet cam. 50 kilometers south of the city in which his attack had taken place. In the trial following his arrest, Stefan would shed further light on his motivation and worldview. Among his many objectionable statements was a complete denial of the Holocaust, which is a criminal offense in Germany. 
he openly expressed pride in his actions, stating that he very intentionally chose to target the synagogue because he saw those inside as his enemies. Balliot admitted that his attack was inspired by the Christchurch mosque shooter, the extremist gunman who was responsible for killing 51 Muslim worshippers in New Zealand. Balliot's manifesto, uh, filled with the neo-Nazi talking points, was soon discovered as well, revealing just how deeply this ideology had been drilled into his head. The aforementioned 35-minute broadcast of the attack was also used as evidence, cementing his guilt to anyone stream, who yeah. may have not been convinced. A psychiatric evaluation presented during the trial suggested that Balliot displayed symptoms of schizophrenia, paranoia, and autism. With all of this evidence stacked against him, Balliot was convicted of two counts of murder and multiple counts of attempted murder. His denial of the Holocaust and lack of remorse played a significant role in shaping the court's perception of his culpability. Fuck. Despite being incarcerated, though, Stefan was not ready for his reign of terror to end. In June 2020, he would attempt to escape his confinement by climbing an 11-foot fence during a recreation period. Although he managed to briefly breach the prison security, he was recaptured just five minutes later. This attempt <laughs> resulted in him being transferred to a maximum security facility. But that wouldn't stop the degenerate shooter, as he'd what attempt to escape fuck? a second time on December 12th, 2022, this time holding two prison officers hostage in the process of using an unidentified Just weapon. Kill him, Guards bro. swiftly intervened, managing to overpower the convict and defuse the situation. Just kill this Fortunately, the two hostages were unharmed, and Balliot was thankfully taken what back is his purpose into custody. On this planet? He serves no purpose on this fucking planet. Get rid of them. Just, just get, throw them in the bottom of the ocean, bro. Let let the let the plankton deal with them, bro. Let the Loch Ness monster deal with this motherfucker, bro. Fuck out of here. Fortunately, this would not be the last of many Twitch-related killings. We'll learn about the others after a brief word from our sponsor. Fuck your sponsor. As an online killing user, video, it's very important for me to make sure my personal information file by clicking the link down below or going to or at Kaliberg School in Eshlov, Sweden. Even before he made headlines, there was much about his day-to-day -day life that was a cause for concern. The young man was reportedly interested in white supremacy, spending a great Bro. deal of time reading about and watching- Bro, what's up with these motherfuckers in white supremacy? What is this, my nigga? Like, some type of racist shit going on, bro? videos on the subject. He also was allegedly fixated on school shootings, showing a fascination with the act and those who committed them. Due to this behavior, Hugo was no stranger to encounters with law enforcement. In January of 2021, he was reprimanded for wearing a Nazi memorabilia to school. A few months later in- Bro, so they got all the signs. They got, they got all the signs. May, he was caught smuggling throwing knives under his clothes in gym class. When asked for his motivation for carrying the weapons, Hugo stated that he did not feel safe. In each of these cases, what? he would be sent into the care of social services. With such a troubled background, it perhaps should have not come as a surprise when the youth's behavior took a drastic turn for the worse. Things hit a boiling point on August 19th, 2021 at approximately 8.06 a.m. When Hugo arrived at his school carrying a gym bag containing knives, airsoft pistols, and a chilling ensemble of black clothing adorned with the Swedish flag. The sequence of events that followed was marked by a disturbing premeditation, intensified by Hugo's intent to livestream the ordeal. With a mobile phone as his camera, Hugo initiated a live stream on Twitch, invoking the name of the Christchurch mosque shooter with the words, Remember lads, subscribe to PewDiePie. Minutes into the stream, he approached a PE teacher, stabbing him in the stomach, an act that reverberated with screams and chaos. The chilling streaming spectacle continued as Hugo's trajectory led him to aim an airsoft pistol at responding officers. The confrontation concluded with warning shots and his subsequent arrest. The aftermath was rife with revelations. Hugo's identification as a self-proclaimed white supremacist, his fascination with extreme extremist ideologies, and his ties to another individual, Lai T. Ekenstein, who carried out a similar attack. Legal proceedings followed swiftly. On December 22nd, 2021, that nigga was able to aim a fucking fake gun 
at police officers after stabbing a motherfucker in school and come out alive, my nigga. He aimed a gun at police officers and they ain't get shot. But let a fucking acorn fall on a police car. This nigga's getting 50 fucking shells in his brain. The London District Court sentenced Hugo to 2.5 years in a youth detention center for attempted murder and nine counts of grossly unlawful threats. However, the echoes of his actions lingered as new revelations surfaced. In March of 2022, Hugo faced additional charges of grossly unlawful threats, reinforcing the haunting echoes of a tragic event. Throughout the process, the specter of the live stream remained, just, showcasing bro. the chilling blend of premeditation and modern niggas, technology that made his actions all the more disturbing. Payan S. Gendron was a 19-year-old residing in Conklin, New York. Due to the vast what? amount of time spent online, the young man began to develop certain extremist ideologies oh which would send God. him down a dark Extreme, path. What type On of the extremist? fateful day of May 14th, 2022, oh Gendron would don tactical gear and arms with the intention of carrying out his meticulously thought out plan. Nigga looks like White Boy 7th Street. Look at this fucking square. Look at this square ass nigga, bro. Man, with an illegally modified semi automatic. This is the Buffalo one? Oh shit, is this the Buffalo one? Rifle in hand, Gendron would enter a predominantly black. Oh yeah, this is a Buffalo one, predominantly black, yep. Black area in Buffalo, New York. I and perpetrate. saw this video. Who saw this video? This shit was bad. Bro, I saw him spin the block on a dude that was pretending to be dead inside and. She was so sad, bro. In an atrocity at the local Tops Friendly Markets in the Maston Park neighborhood. As the clock struck 2.30 p.m., the teenager would unleash terror upon the unsuspecting shoppers, indiscriminately shooting people left and right. Outside the store, he'd continue his assault, claiming the lives of three more individuals. His entry into the store led to an exchange of gunfire with 55-year-old armed security guard Aaron Salter Jr., a retired Buffalo police officer. Valiantly seeking to halt the rampage despite his best efforts, Salter would tragically lose his life. Following this, Gendron would cut short six more lives, leaving behind shattered families and a community Bro. steeped in anguish. It would soon be discovered that the killer had streamed the entire onslaught live on his Twitch channel, capturing the horrific moments as he drove into the store's parking lot, showcasing the unfolding atrocity from his distorted perspective. Police would eventually apprehend the shooter, with him surprisingly complying, surrendering and removing his tactical gear. Unfortunately, oh, the damn sh shove that fucking pistol inside of his dick hole. Take the foreskin, cut, make it like it's a suppressor, and shoot inside of the nigga's cock. Let the bullet come out of his asshole. Fuck this nigga, bro. Damage had already been done. Following his arrest, investigators would uncover Gendron's digital footprint, indicating extensive planning and reconnaissance. Social media posts, originally shared on platforms like Discord and 4chan, revealed disturbing details in his online diatribe. His 180 page long manifesto further exposed Gendron's hatred towards the African American community, with him speaking about targeting the specific store due to its location within the predominantly black zip code, and harboring alarming beliefs about ethnic and cultural replacement. The terminally My online Lord. young man would also meticulously detail his visits to the supermarket prior to the shooting, surveilling the store's busiest hours and contemplating his attack, showing the chilling amount of forethought to put into the scheme. This wouldn't be the first sign, however, as prior incidents also hinted at concerning behavior from this individual. Reports surfaced of a generalized threat made by the shooter in high school. When being what? asked by a teacher during a class project what his plans were after he graduated, Gendron would chillingly respond by saying, I want to murder and commit suicide. Right. This incident would lead to Gendron being referred to a mental health hospital. You know them weird ass, freak ass, dark kit, them, them kit, bro. They got a side to him, bro. Before being released a day and a half later, during the sentencing, the streamer stated that he was remorseful of his actions, tearful and the streamer. You just called the nigga a streamer. Full of regret. Bro, skin this nigga, bro. Skin him. Threats. Goli his fucking teeth showing from his cheek, nigga. I want to see his teeth through his fucking cheeks. Skin this nigga.
coinciding starkly with the coldness with which he carried out his prior actions. The convicted killer admitted to the pain he inflicted, acknowledging the irreversible loss and devastation he caused. The aftermath echoed. Is this fucking maggot crying? Is he crying? Carried out his prior actions. The convicted killer admitted to the pain he inflicted, acknowledging the irreversible loss and devastation he caused. The aftermath echoed with the profound grief of the victims' families, who bore witness to the unfathomable tragedy. Some expressed forgiveness, while others yearned for Gendron to grapple with his actions for the rest of his days. Grapple in prison by BBC. Yo, yo, I hope they put in this nigga to the fucking ringer in there, bro. Incarcerated without respite. Twitch would release a public statement on the matter two days later stating that they condemned the shooting, expressing sympathy for the victims, their families, and the affected communities, with them additionally citing that they'd be working with law enforcement agencies and other tech companies to prevent the spread of the footage online. They emphasized their commitment to community safety and pledged to learn from this incident to improve policy. On August 26, hey, 2018, a Madden 19 tournament was held in Jacksonville, Florida, as oh part God. of the Madden NFL Championship Series, an annual esports competition held at the Good Luck I Have Fun this. Gaming Bar within the Chicago Pizza Restaurant at the Jacksonville Landing Shop and Dining Complex. 117 players competed head to head in a two day event. The competition offered participants the opportunity to qualify for the finals in Las Vegas and a combined cash prize pool of $5,000. But unfortunately for players and spectators alike, that bright Sunday afternoon Florida. would turn into a travesty that no one could have expected. You see, among the attendees was David Katz, a 24-year-old competitive gamer known by the pseudonym I live in the city this happened in and I got my check on that Saturday it happened I was supposed to go to the tops to cash that check and I got called into work instead shit is kinda crazy I'm in jail. Katz hailed from Baltimore, Maryland and had previously secured a tenth of bread. Katz Katz, a 24 year old competitive gamer known by the pseudonym Bread. Katz hailed from Baltimore, Maryland and had previously secured a $10,000 win at a 2017 Madden tournament. During the competition Twitch broadcast, things took a dark turn as Katz, visibly irate, pulled out one of two handguns and opened fire. Fatally killing two fellow players, 27-year-old Taylor Robertson, also known by the gaming tag, spot Literally, like, over a bro. Florida, that's crazy. Was it from... How many times I gotta tell you? They just said where he was from. And he was from another state. He was at a tournament in Florida. That's what always happens for a bunch of randoms infesting, infesting my fucking, fucking state, bro. Where's he from? Maryland or some shit? Bought me, please. And 22 year old Elijah Clayton, also known as True Boy. Cats would additionally injure 11 others. Why do folks kill people over nothing? Bro, bro. Bro. It's bad. That's why I don't like, 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 bro. I don't know. That shit. That's the worst type of like that shit's ass. That's why I hate home invaders. Like like because they willing to kill the motherfuckers in here. Like like I've seen so much shit, bro. I've seen so much shit, bro. Niggas really just to throw niggas' lives away, bro. It yeah, what? Rage. I'm a diagnosed schizophrenic with bipolar disorder. On God, these niggas are just weird. I've never wanted to just kill people, bro. You're one of God's favorites, bro at the tournament, including shooting a 19-year-old boy by the name yeah, of well, Driny Joka. And I don't understand how these cops let these weirdo that just killed multiple people live. But then would kill an unarmed person shit makes no sense. 31-year-old Christopher McFarland who received a grazing bullet wound to the head. The live stream having captured the moments leading up to the shooting as well as audio of the gunshots and the ensuing chaos would inevitably be taken down by Twitch, but not before the disturbing footage had a chance to be shared across the internet. While Kat's exact motives remained unclear, his apparent vendetta against specific individuals became evident, as what? Alexander Madunik, who was shot in the foot by Katz, claimed he lost a game 
game in the tournament earlier that day, and was visibly angry about it. As mentioned earlier, David had a background in the competitive Madden space, having previously participated in various other tournaments in the past, with him in an interview referring to himself as one of the better players. Later reports would come out suggesting Katz may have had a history of mental health issues and behavioral problems prior to the shooting. Court documents from his parents' divorce proceedings indicated Depressing Katz had previously picture. been placed on an antipsychotic medicine known to treat schizophrenia. as well as two types of antidepressants. Growing up, he had been involuntarily committed to a psychiatric ward six times, including spending 97 days in wilderness therapy. While David's father would deny that he showcased any signs of schizophrenia, his mother implied the opposite, stating, Stupid ass father, bro he was in a desperate state. No bathing for days, other times walking in circles and being violent towards her. Nevertheless, this tragic incident How you shooting niggas because you asked at the game? Truly shocked to the gaming community and had a profound impact. Dude, with look at this fucking twerp. I'd fucking open his fucking jaw. I'd fucking rip his head open. Bro. Fuck this fucking EA Sports themselves. This, tw this twerp. Oh my god. God, these fucking loser genetic ass in the back. Look at this fucking loser. Fucking gouge his eyeballs out, bro. Even commenting publicly on the matter, condemning the shooting as a senseless act of violence. Twitch would also respond by expressing their deepest sympathies to the victims. Following the unforeseen tragedy, EA would cancel all subsequent tournaments for the remainder of the season until they could examine and review their safety protocols, implementing more stringent security measures to help prevent such incidents in the future. Set against the serene backdrop of Northern Ireland, Stephen McCullough, a 33-year-old YouTuber from Woodland Gardens, Lisbon, became a prominent figure in the digital realm. With over 37,000 subscribers, his online persona thrived in the world of pop culture collectible toys and memorabilia, specifically Doctor Who, where he meticulously curated a charismatic and engaging presence. Now, as you can see, what, 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 what do you want? I'm trying to do. What happened? What happened with the guy that ha that had his dad's head in a jar? Review here. Not been released yet. What do you mean it hasn't been released yet? What do you call that? McCullough's life appeared. You didn't hear about that? that? Happened like a few weeks ago. He had a YouTube like like, like he was. You remember that? He literally made YouTube videos with his dad head. Like niggas thought that he was cap. It was actually his dad's head in the jar, bro. Literally fairly ordinary. After fostering a relationship with 32-year-old Natalie McNally in August 2022, by December of the same year, she was 15 weeks pregnant. Their life together seemed unremarkable, blending seamlessly with the humdrum of everyday existence. Unfortunately, on- Bro, I just opened the- Bro, can we stop talking about- Yo, I ain't gonna lie. What is it? Like, what are you? Bro, yo, get all that shit out the car, bro. I don't want to see that. <laughs> bro, just get out of the car. Why is it? Why? Y'all niggas are so fucking. <laughs> bro, if I was a dog, I'd, I'd fucking bite y'all niggas' ankles, bro. On the fateful night of December 18th, 2022, that tranquility would be shattered. As it would turn out, Natalie McNally, pregnant and full of life, would meet a tragic end, being brutally stabbed in the comfort what? of her own home. Coincidentally, on the same night, McCullough appeared to be streaming himself, playing through Grand Theft Auto Vice City on his YouTube channel, Vote Saxon 07, a reference to the television show Doctor Who. But as investigations delved deeper into the murder of McNally, it would be uncovered that McCullough's supposed livestream wasn't all it seemed. Forensic examination of the creator's devices revealed that the over six hour stream was pre recorded. Oh. My. God. That is a crazy alibi. You have a pre-recorded stream? 
But let's say I get on stream, like, yo, fuck this, I ain't reading chat today, I'm playing Valorant, and I ain't stopping until I get this rank, and the whole time it's like I'm just gaming, and you casually look at chat, and it'll be like this, and I'm like, yeah, the whole time it's a like pre recording, and I'm going, and I'm murdering somebody, so I can use that as my alibi, bro, I was streaming on Twitch, I was streaming on Kick. That's crazy. That's a, that's a, that's actually compies, bro. That's compies. Not the murder part, but like the, the using this as an alibi, using streaming as an alibi, a pre recorder. I could use that. Not to murder people, of course. Meticulously structured to getting away with cheating. Yeah, yo, I was streaming. I was streaming. I wasn't fucking her, bro. Like, literally streaming, bro. Like, what? Simulate a live interaction while the tragedy unfolded in the physical realm. He went so far as to claim he was having technical difficulties which prevented him from interacting with the live chats in an attempt to further sell the facade. Upon this revelation, <laughs> the credibility of the streamer's alibi was shattered. And how did they know? Yo, how did they know? Did they find it on this fucking computer, bro? Hold on, bro. Tragedy unfolded in the physical realm. He went so far as to claim he was having technical difficulties which prevented him from interacting with the live chats in an attempt to further sell the facade. Upon this revelation, the credibility of the streamer's alibi was shattered. Initially ruled out as a suspect, the man suddenly found himself ensnared in a complex legal web. Court proceedings would also reveal that post-incident, McCullough allegedly recorded the conversations of the murdered woman's family without her knowledge in an attempt to gather insight on whether or not they suspected his involvement in the incident. Echoing in the midst of the trial and investigation, the McNally family's anguish reverberated through the courtroom. On a slightly related note, around the same time, a 22-year-old man by the name of Cayenne Withers would be sentenced to three months in jail after posting a grossly offensive, edited video of Natalie singing James Brown's I Feel Good. The complaint would be filed by McNally's cousin, who was highly offended by the post. While the motivation behind McCullough's actions remains a central question, prosecution has suggested the catalyst for the tragic incident may have emerged from messages Jordan? exchanged between Natalie McNally and another individual, mere days before her untimely Young demise. Queso, These interactions chill. potentially triggered a chain of events that culminated in the fatal stabbing. Although due to the fact that the case is still ongoing, the specifics have not been made public. As of writing, McCullough has yet to submit a plea, Badass so time Nick. will tell how exactly this story will play out. Grant Amato's story is one- This motherfucker just looks like he's ready to fucking touch something or kill something, bro. ...that navigates through the labyrinth of obsession, addiction, and tragic consequences. Born on May 20th, 1989 in Florida, Grant's life was intertwined with ambition and familial expectations. His parents were Chad and Margaret Amato both successful professionals in the medical field. Grant, alongside his brother Cody, attended Timber Creek High School, where they both engaged in sports, with Grant notably active in weightlifting. Like their parents, the brothers shared aspirations no, in medicine, you, you. both you pursuing nursing that. degrees at the University of Central Florida after their high school years. Well, yeah. Cody succeeded, Grant's journey stumbled at the gates of a nurse anesthetist program. In June 2018, Grant would be suspended and eventually terminated from Advent Health Orlando due to allegations of improperly administering the sedative propofol to patients. The hospital also suspected drug theft, leading to Grant's arrest for grand larceny by Orlando police. Desperate for a new foothold in life, he sought solace in the burgeoning world of Twitch streaming, hoping to monetize his gaming hobby. Propelled oh, yeah. by his family support, particularly Elden. by Cody and their father Chad, Grant attempted to establish him. No, this nigga was using mimic. Fucking loser. Self on the platform. However, his streaming endeavors failed to gain traction. Despite sporadic broadcasts, yeah. Grant barely earned $150 a month from subscriptions. Fucking his aspirations loser. would Broke also boy. continue to wilt in the shadow of an all consuming addiction to webcam models, no specifically clout. fixating on Sylvia Vensis Lavova, a Bulgarian sex worker. In an attempt to impress her, Grant spiraled into a financial abyss, siphoning over $200,000 from his family to sustain his illusion of affluence. Fucking slicker, bro. 
frequents in their private chats. In an effort to curb his addiction, Grant's family would fund a $15,000 rehabilitation program, but he quickly dropped out and refused to sever ties with Sylvia, leading to his expulsion from the family home. Enraged by the estrangement and fueled by delusion, the degenerate failed Twitch streamer began to plot an atrocity. His scheme would unfold on January 24th, 2019, when Grant executed a meticulously planned attack, coldly murdering his mother as she worked at her desk, then waited to ambush his father upon his return from work. The heinous act continued as he tried to convince his brother Cody to come home after his nursing shift, texting him using his father's number, before callously shooting him upon his arrival. He'd then attempt to stage the scene as a murder-suicide by placing the gun by his brother's body. Fleeing to a nearby hotel, Grant was apprehended two days later on the 26th, maintaining his innocence despite overwhelming evidence linking him to the crime, including a thumb drive filled with images of Sylvia connected to the family computer during the time of the murders. Throughout the trial held in July, Grant vehemently denied his culpability, but the weight of evidence and the tragic loss of life led to his conviction. A little over a year later, on August 20th, 2020, Grant would be sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. Lowell Thomas Bro, wait, is this Florida again? Schumacher is a 33-year-old resident of Boca Raton, Florida. Bro, that's right. Bro, that is right, yo. Yo, Boca's right there. <laughs> Boca is right there, bro. Who found himself thrust into the spotlight due to a series of disturbing events that unfolded on Twitch. Prior to the incident which made him infamous, Schoenmacher led a relatively ordinary life, veiled from public attention. Little was known about his daily existence, his struggles, or the demons he grappled with. However, on December 9th, 2022, the seemingly unassuming man made headlines for all the wrong reasons. He ventured into a dark territory of online behavior, weaving a narrative of terror and threats in the live chat of a Twitch broadcaster. In an alarming display, he typed, mass murder coming soon, and chillingly added, today I'm going to kill 20 people. Have what? a nice day. These words splashed across the screen, triggered a wave of concern, and prompted another Twitch user to alert the FBI. What? Law enforcement swiftly intervened, tracing Schoenmacher's digital footprint to his home at Boca Raton. Confronted by deputies, he admitted to the statements, but brushed them off as drunken ramblings, a consequence of his depression and emotional turmoil following his grandfather's passing. Despite his claims that the threats were not serious and w that he police. had no intention of harm, w the authorities police. took swift action. On December 14th, Schoenmacher was arrested and faced multiple charges related to making threats of violence. His life, once shrouded in privacy, was now thrust into the harsh glare of media scrutiny. The aftermath of his actions left a lingering impact not only on his own future, but also raised questions about the responsibility and consequences of online communication. As the dust settled, it remained unclear whether the 33-year-old's account was banned from Twitch or if any actions were taken by the platform to prevent similar incidents, although it marked a significant moment that irreversibly altered the trajectory of the man's life, casting a long shadow over his future endeavors. So there you have w some of the biggest- Hey, Florida police stopped it when they could. W Florida police right there. It was on time. It was, all he did was make threats and they was like, fuck that, we on that. We on that, nigga. Generates on the Twitch platform. And because of its live nature, they unfortunately- He has a good commentary voice. He's just like a fucking square though. Unfortunately will not be the last. So with that thought, I think I'll end the video here. And until next time- My dog got freckles, no freckles on his face, but all over his arms. Thanks for watching. Fucking geek. Jesus Christ. <laughs> nah, I'm playing. Good video, gang. Good little vid, bro. Good little vid. Good little vid. Good little vid. Said I'm on three plus right now, if I'm being honest. Hope my feelings shoot out like a rocket. Niggas thought they had the swag, but I'm really on it. Look at you just window shopping that new bag I bought it.